Bodacious Bichon here, back, and today we're talking about prize picks, better, we're talking about our overs and unders today, and we're figuring out who we're taking, who we're not taking. Uh, this weekend is wild card weekend, NFL football, NFL playoffs is here, and it's, it's going to be a tough one, it's going to be a tough one, and it all starts off with Cleveland versus Houston, Joe Flacco and C.J. Stroud, who's going to hit their unders, who's going to hit their overs, <coughs> Joe Flacco, 271, CJ Stroud, 248. Okay, so we know we both know they're, they're, both their defenses are pretty good with D'Amico Ryans as the head coach for the Houston Texans, coming from a San Francisco 49ers defense, and which was pretty good last year. And then you got uh, Cleveland Browns, which is, uh, you could say Cinderella of the year, right? Joe Flacco stepping in, putting up crazy numbers, doing his thing, and he gets Amari Cooper back. And Joku off a big game. It's um, it's looking, it's looking like it it could be a, a real slugfest. Meaning, it could be a high scoring game. Now, does that mean it's necessarily all going to be in the air or on the ground? That's a tough one, but you don't have to think too hard because Jerome Ford's only around forty three, I believe. Today he today he comes in at forty three and a half. Yeah, like I thought, and Singletary at sixty five and a half. You're probably feeling like it's a little safer to take Singletary under, possibly. Um, Jerome Ford's over, looking kind of good. I might take him in a in a bet or two. Jerome Ford gets a lot of carries. You know, he he sees the ball a lot, um, receiving wise, and I just can't see why they they got to keep him in that offense because to me that offense is Cooper, Ford, and Joku. With with those three active. You know, it, it's it's a t- it's they're tough. Um, obviously, Cooper didn't play against the Jets when Joku went crazy and Ford went crazy. But I don't I don't see why they wouldn't when they're at the peak of their offense. So Joe Flacco, would I take his over on the two seventy one? Would I take it two seventy one and a half? Is he going to get two hundred and seventy two yards? With Amari Cooper sitting at seventy four and a half right now projection. It's a tough one. Man. It's a tough one. CJ Stroud, I think 248. I might go over. Um, <clears throat> but you just got to be cautious. Cleveland Browns' defense is really good. You got to be cautious. Do you think Stroud can overcome that defense? It's a step up from the Colts from what most of the people saw recently up CJ Stroud. So, I, personally, I'm not sure I'd take any of these guys. I probably won't. Maybe in one slip I'll I'll put in maybe in one slip I'll put in a Stroud and Flacco over, but I, I don't think I would take their unders. It's too risky. Now with Amari Cooper, remember this is his first game back since his two hundred and fifty two yard game. Yeah, I'm not I can't bet the under on that. There's no way. And then Stroud, you know, still playing phenomenal. Uh clinching in the clinching his division last week, which was tough alone. I think you're safer going the overs than the unders, but if you think it's really going to be a defensive game, you know the unders is the way to go. Take the running backs, Singletary and Ford, and um, yeah, follow your script. Second game. I actually don't know the second game for this day. I think it's not Chiefs and Dolphins, is it? Oh, it is Chiefs and Dolphins. Okay, so, wow, Chiefs and Dolphins are Saturday, 5 o'clock. And, oof, that's a tough one. Two attack of Aloha, 240 and a half passing yards. Patrick Mahomes, 249 and a half. Whew, man. If there's one thing Mahomes likes doing, it's like getting real close to his projections, you know? And <clears throat> I know this Miami defense is, um, I know they're very up and coming. You know, they have, they've been, they've been pretty good all around. But, um, man. I hate to shoot down Tyree Kill and Tua's campaign, but they 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 choke. They choke against good teams uh, throughout this whole season. What I've seen is they choke against every competitor, like at least really good competitor. And <clears throat> this is uh this is the biggest this is the biggest stage for them, especially with Tua getting hurt and Skylar Thompson playing last season uh, in the playoffs and ending the regular season. 
does two ugly games. Um, this is pretty much Tua's first step. This is Tua's first. This is real first uh, obstacle. His first challenge, and I don't. I don't see him, man. <clears throat> I don't see the Miami Dolphins winning this game, but I see him getting over 240 yards. I see Tyreek Hill lighting up the Chiefs offense. I see Mahomes doing the same thing to Miami. Um, because right now, Travis Kelsey is at 40 or 50 yards, and I would definitely feel safe taking that 100%. No doubt in my mind whatsoever. So I would take the overs on 242 and 249, Mahomes. It's it's playoff. I know it's playoff football. A lot more defense, right? But I think with two teams like this, I think it means a lot more offense. A lot more. So, yeah, definitely I would take the over on Tua and Mahomes. Mainly Tua because he's got Tyreek Hill. If you don't find the ball, if you don't find Tyreek the ball in this game, you're going to lose. You're going to lose inevitably. There's no doubt in my mind. Sunday morning, we got... Josh, oh, well, let me say who's going to win. The Chiefs or the Dolphins? I think I already did. The Chiefs. 100% the Chiefs. All right. Um, Steelers, Buffalo. Do I have to do this? It's going to be a blowout, okay? It's going to be a blowout just like when Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen blew out the Patriots, the Mac Jones Patriots. Yes. It's going to be a blowout. No offense to Mason Rudolph, sitting at 161 and a half passing yards. But man, does Buffalo give up yardage, man? I swear they do. So, <clears throat> from a betting perspective, put Rudolph's uh, passing yards over 161. I don't think there's cold. Ooh, I forgot to mention the weather in Miami and Buffalo and Chiefs. Or is that Buffalo? No, it's Chiefs. So it's in Kansas. Ooh. Never mind. I might say stay away from that game. Man, disregard everything I just said about that game. Um, yeah, Buffalo and Steelers. Blowout. Rudolph will get his over. He's so low right now because of how bad that was against the Ravens, but um, luckily Najee Harris stepped up. But I don't think weather's that bad right now in Buffalo. I don't think so. Yeah. Rudolph over. Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, they'll they'll step up. They'll get they'll get fourteen points on the board, you know? Fourteen. Maybe seventeen at most. While freaking Buffalo has like thirty or forty tomorrow. Or sorry, Sunday morning. Um after that after that it goes it goes Packers versus the Dallas Cowboys. Green Bay here to show up. Green Bay here to stay. Jordan Love, 248 and a half passing yards against the Dallas Cowboys offense. Ah, oh, defense, sorry. Um, it's safe to say he would get the under. But tell me Jordan Love hasn't shocked all y'all. I think he has, and I think he's got to be paid his dues, right? Um... This is just a matter of fact, if you think J-Love is going to keep his hot streak, his hot play going, or if you think the defense is going to catch up to him and ultimately you know, crash and burn for their offense. Okay, I'm back. Um, I'm back. And I was just looking over a couple things, and I'm not finding CeeDee Lamb. I've been trying to find his yards. Oh, 104. I look a little wider. Okay, I don't know. It's strange. 105 yards for CeeDee Lamb. Dak Prescott. Um, Dak Prescott. What is it, 278? Oof. I think I like Lamb over 100, right? Uh, Joe Barry is a pretty trash defensive coordinator, in my opinion. Sure, he's had a season or two, but... He's very, he's very, um, he's very soft and passive, and yeah, it's not gonna get you a dub in the playoffs. I'll tell you that much, especially against a team like Dallas that has everything to prove year after year, with all the media falling on them and 
you know, going all out on them and letting them hear what they, uh, letting them hear what they gotta hear. Uh, would I go Dax 278 and a half over? That's a very iffy one for me, but I would take CD, I would take CD over 100. And same with Tony Pollard, probably a low, they probably got him at a low floor, but his ceiling's really high for this game. And I'm gonna find it right now. 61 and a half. Yeah, I got, ooh. Even guys like Chuba Hubbard that we played against um, got that yardage easily. Whew. Aaron Jones, <clears throat> 70 yards. Mm, James Cook cooked this uh, D-line. Did anyone else? Yeah, I think a couple times. Yeah, it might, it might be safer to take Aaron Jones rush plus receiving, honestly. Or maybe a rush plus receiving touchdown for Aaron Jones. That could be safer, ultimately. So Aaron Jones with his rush plus receiving, he's sitting at, ooh, he's sitting at 95 and a half. That's because he hit 100 on his rush. So he's hit it three games in a row. He's hit over 100 three games in a row for rush plus receiving. I want to lock it in because to me, he's the soul of that offense. He is... He can do it all on receive on the receiving end. He can do it all on the floor, ah, rushing end, which was on the floor. And I think I would take him ninety five and a half over, <clears throat> not just as a fan, but just being honest. Maybe Jaden Reed's yards. Um, not so much a touchdown. I would never do that. I had Jaden Reed for a touchdown last week, but it was a demon. And he had that long catch, like sixty, seventy yards, and you know he just. He couldn't get in there, unfortunately. So sad. Whew. Okay, so we got those quarterbacks: Jordan Love and Prescott. I want to take, I want to take Jordan Love's over, man. The way he's been playing, but he played the Bears last week, so you know it's not, it's nothing too, it's nothing too spectacular. This could be one of those ugly games for Dak, though. So I might stay away from Dak Prescott. It could just be a straight running game. It could be. Maybe it could just be the like the little things. I don't know if he's gonna go ballistic, man. You know, he only hit his projection over a yard last week. The year, the week before that went over, and then three weeks in a row didn't hit this projection. So it depends if if you want to play streaky or not. You know, I, I'm not. I'm I'm staying away from that man. Um, after that, <coughs> we got the Sunday night game, which is you already know. Jared Goff versus Matthew Stafford. Jared Goff returning to his home in Los Angeles and Stafford where he created mega stars like Megatron. And he's sitting right now at 275 and a half with the receiving core with the likes of Higby, Cooper Cup, and possibly offensive rookie of the year, Puka Nakua. And and they got they got to go up against a young, very spry um Hungry defense with Detroit Lions, like Anzalone, Hutchinson, all these guys. They're all hungry. They all want to win. They all want to. They all want to. They all want this rivalry for their quarterback to matter. As Jared Goff six at two sixteen and a half with his receiving core, a lot of young guys. Um, Amon Ra at the top of all things. David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs. Will Will the affair? Will the affair? Will the affair? Come in the way of their victory. Uh, because Montgomery and Gibbs, they sometimes they roll back and forward, but they have a hard time with sticking with the hot hand. And I think that, that's something you got to do in these games, man. You, you know, if Gibbs is going crazy, uh, his his um, yards per carry is super high. Keep him, like, don't keep, I mean, obviously he needs his rest, but keep him in as much as possible. Let him work. Um, a Detroit team like this, who doesn't rely heavily on their passing? All right, a little bit of technical difficulties there, but let me just conclude with the Rams versus Lions. Matthew Stafford over two two seventy five and a half, and then Jared Goff. Mm. I might not be feeling Jared Goff. He was at two fifty seven earlier this week. Stafford was a little lower, but I like Stafford's receiving core. I like how Kyron Williams. Uh, yards after catch is pretty good. 
So, um, I think the whole offense is going to really come around Stafford. Stafford has been carrying this team, not going to lie. Even with the likes of Cup and Puka. So, yeah. Who I have winning that game? I probably... Uh, I can't see Lions... I can't see them losing. But I see it uh, at least in the 30s. Not going to lie. Like the 30s. Like maybe like 33-27 type of score, you know. And then last but not least, Monday. It goes Baker Mayfield versus Jalen Hurts. But Jalen Hurts hasn't been on the board, so I'm not. I haven't been doing too much research of it. But Jalen Hurts may not play. Is that what's going on right now? Is if that's the case, I'm taking the unders on a couple guys. Maybe Devontae Smith. Maybe not AJ Brown because um, he can check down a lot to AJ Brown and do a lot of crazy yard after catch type stuff. Easy slants, easy posts, outs. He can do a lot of easy stuff. So, I probably would take AJ's over if Jalen was out. Um, Baker Mayfield, 236. Bro, you got to bounce back from last week, bro. And I don't even know why he's at 236. He was at 225 last week. Gets an 11 and a half yard bump. I was get an 11 and a half yard bump playing against Philly's defense, which is which is even harder than... Um, who'd they play? Carolina or something? Or Atlanta? Someone... Well, not good, bro. No, Atlanta played the Saints. I think it was Carolina. Fucking, that was horrible, man. But 236 against Philly. Mm-hmm. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, they getting, they getting busy. They getting busy for sure. Take a little kid out in bets, you know, receptions or whatever. Um, And that game probably will go down to Philly. But wouldn't be surprised if the Bucks get rolling and, man, they torch. But it could go either way. Both offenses are very explosive, so obviously Tush Push. Tush Push is what kept Philly in it all this year, to be honest. But, um, yeah, that's all the passing yards. Um, a couple receiving combos I mentioned, a little bit of rushing combos as well. That's going to be the gist of this video. And just a little bit more, you know, to think about when it comes to passing yards and rushing for this upcoming weekend. It's good to take things into account. It's good to take other people's opinions. Um, it really, it really can, uh, it really can improve your betting life. You know, have a better betting history. You know, turn L's into dubs, type stuff. Turn L's into dubs. I like that. So I'm gonna end it on that note. Uh, go ahead and subscribe, like, comment if you want. It's up to you. Go Pack Go. Jordan Love. Get that dub. Uh, have a good football weekend and let's get rolling.